This is Unitalk, the podcast series of the University of Debrecen. We've saved you a seat. In each episode, we'll show you a different aspect of life at UD. Students, professors, and researchers will take you behind the scenes to talk about their life, work, and passion. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast series of the University of Debrecen called Unitalk. Today, I'm here with one of my colleagues, Jofi. Hi, nice to meet you. And we have also have an instructor pilot who can tell you about our professional pilot, pilot BSc program as well. Hello, and thank you for inviting me for the interview. Could you please a little bit introduce yourself to our audience? Yes, um, my name is Mate, and uh, actually I'm type rating instructor at Pharma Flight, and also I'm a compliance monitoring and safety manager. So um, I graduated at College of Nyíregyháza in the same course, so the integrated ATP course. Um, then I started my career as flight instructor, and then I joined the Civil Aviation Authority. Um, I was responsible for the theoretical knowledge examination and the practical examination. And afterward, I spent several years at the Locus company as airline pilot. Then I completed my type rating instructor course at the company, so I'm instructor on Airbus A320, and I'm also responsible for the compliance and safety topic. Could you actually explain and tell us what PharmaFlight is? Uh, PharmaFlight is a, a partner of the University of Debrecen. Uh, the company actually established in uh, 2015, and um, uh, it has three main areas. The first one is the ATO. The ATO is the approved training organization. Uh, we have plenty of courses, uh, including the uh, basic ones like uh, the PPR course. We have instructor uh, trainings and then uh, we have uh, type rating course as well. Um, the second part of the company is the simulator center. We are operating um, FMPT2 and uh, FFS, so full flight simulators as well. And we have an aeromedical center uh, where we conduct uh, medical examinations and checks, including the initial issue of class one medical certificate. This is really important, for example, uh, when somebody uh, applying for a, for a cadet and uh, he or she can complete the, uh, the initial exam in Debrecen because the other center is in Budapest only, so that's mm. all. You mentioned that the University of Debrecen are uh, sort of partners with the uh, PharmaFlight in a program uh, that is uh, running here as a professional pilot uh, BSc. Can you tell us a little bit about this program as well? Okay, so this program actually divided into two parts. The first one is um, basic or, or standard uh, engineering uh, program, a bachelor degree program. And the other part uh, is the integrated airline transport pilot program, mm -hmm. uh, which is in accordance with the EASA standard. The EASA is the European Aviation Safety Agency. So uh, we have a program, we have training rollout based on uh, the European law. And are there any special, let's say, pre-entry requirements? Exactly. Uh, there are plenty of them. Uh, the first one and one of the most important one is the EASA Class 1 Medical Certificate. Uh, student has ha, a student a student have to has to undergo a uh, medical check uh, in a quite deep way in including the uh, psychological test as well afterward before the very first flight training uh, they have to complete the ICAO English language proficiency check the ELP check and they have to pass it at level four or above so five six also acceptable um, it depends on the uh, validity uh, uh, so the, uh, it depends on the expiry and um, uh, it is important to mention that must not be confused with the ELS uh, English uh, language exam. So it's a different one? It's a different one, yes. It's, it's uh, quite an aviation related ah, uh, English language proficiency check, yes. 
And um, also the last one is that uh, they have to pass the peer entry math and physics test. Uh, it is connected to the ATP and also the CPR courses, so it's a, a, a specific requirements. What is ATP and CPL? I just <laughs> a little bit the track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the CPL is the commercial pilot license and the ATP or the ATPL is the airline transport pilot license. So, for example, when a, when a student completes a course, uh, they receive a commercial pilot license license with an instrument rating including the airline transport pilot category so in a theoretical way they will have uh, uh, the highest level of, of uh, theoretical knowledge however they need also much more practice when they get into a, a commercial industry let's say and uh, then they can collect 1,500 hours, at the end they will receive the ATPL license. So when they complete the course, they will receive a CPLIR license. So you mentioned the ATP course. Could you tell us how it's built up? Yes, yeah, so it's a quite complex course uh, as it is uh, an integrated one, not a modular one. So the integrated course uh, consists uh, 13 theoretical knowledge subjects and uh, uh, and it's connected to the uh, authority exams as well. And in the meantime, uh, students uh, have to complete the practical training, both in simulators and on real single engine and uh, multi engine aircraft. Uh, during the course, uh, they fly a total of 200 hours in single pilot and in multi-pilot uh, operation. And also, uh, they complete at the end the type rating course, which is the curiosity of this training. Um, so you talked about theoretical subjects. Uh, what theoretical knowledge is required uh, for a pilot? For a pilot, it is important to have the standard engineering subjects as well, like math and physics. But they have to use it as uh, how we call it's uh, mental math. So they have to make the quick calculations uh, in, in their head and, and then just turn it out. So just a subtract or, or an add uh, quite a uh, fast way and, and precisely as well. And of course, we have the specific topics. Uh, it's called the ATPL subject, 13 of them. Uh, there are quite specific rules for this. And uh, this is uh, this is a huge challenge to complete it within the time frame, which is 18 months. They they have to complete it within six sittings and four attempts, all the 13 subjects. So it's it's quite demanding. Um, the the specific subjects are like the principle of flight, uh, where they learn in a theoretical way how to how to fly the aircraft. What are the basic um, uh, rules, rules of air actually, and then uh, also very important, the meteorology, the navigation, including the general or the radio navigation, um, air low, of course, uh, human performance, flight performance and planning, the operational procedure, communication, and so on and so on. Um, and once the theoretical part is finished, then what are the practical training phases of this course? It's, it's slightly a bit more complicated because while they are completing the uh, ATPL subjects in a theoretical way, they also start the flying training, which is not in the very close connection. However, uh, of course, also the practical training is started in a basic uh, item. So um, we start with the VFR. This is the visual flight rules. Um, it, it contains mainly the uh, standard traffic circuits, the, the airspace practice, and so on and so on. Afterward, we uh, change to the uh, instrument uh, rules flying, uh, then the multi-engine piston uh, training, the UPRT is the upset prevention and recovery training, and the MCC is the multi-crew cooperation course. Uh, the total of flight hours is 200, uh, 60 on simulator, and 140 on a real, a real aircraft. And afterward, uh, they can complete the type rating course as well on an Airbus A320, which is the most famous uh, aircraft uh, nowadays. Um, it, this is for more than 40 hours. And when is the first time when the student can fly? Uh, the first time is after the second semester, so quite at the beginning of the training. And um, during the summer internship, uh, after, com after finishing the exam period, uh, they start the actual flying on a real aircraft because mm -hmm. 
sometimes it's 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 a surprise for a for a, a person who never heard about uh, aviation training that they start to fly with a real aircraft. This is really important to to feel the aircraft actually. Afterward, there are plenty of items in the simulator, which is really important and useful um, to catch up the line in the simulator because it's much more effective to, f to fly based on the instruments. However, at the very first stage of the training, this is much better to to let them know how to fly a rear aircraft, mm -hmm. what are the conditions, what is the feeling, what they have to feel. So the first 30 hours uh, uh, are flown uh, during, the seven, uh, during the first internship uh, after the second semester. That sounds really interesting. Yes, it is. Um, so once they can actually fly, what does a trainee pilot's average day look like when they attend school? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because it's kind of behind the stage and uh, most of the times not even the, uh, the passengers see what, what, the, what the pilots or cabin crew or the crew uh, do during, during their normal day. Um, it looks quite similar. Uh, like those days. So uh, they have a briefing at the very beginning. Um, during this briefing, the instructor reviewed the training folder, uh, checking the training history, and afterward also the other documents like the medical certificate or the license is applicable, um, the logbook and so and so on. Uh, we have a kind of acronym. It's, it's quite uh, common in the aviation industry. We use this I am safe model. So uh, both the, the instructor check the students and the, ch the, the, the student check the instructor uh, for some items like illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue and, and, and eating. This is really important to check all these basic elements um, in order to be assured that they are ready or they are fit to fly uh, for, on that day. During the briefing, they also receive some questions, let's say quizzes, to check the theoretical knowledge, how they prepared and, and which way they prepared uh, for, uh, the, the, uh, for the task of the day. And uh, afterward, also the instructor presents a new topic or just uh, uh, new stuff for the student. And um, also they can review a previous one if, if they already experienced crew. After this briefing, um, they proceed to the flying training, actually. So um, the flying training looks like also in the simulator and also in the real aircraft that at the very beginning of the training, it's it up to the maximum of 30 minutes. It's enough for the pilot. You'll be tired at the, at the end of the day, even even though it's just mm -hmm. a 30 minutes short flight. It's like when you start to drive, I guess. Exactly. Like you, you get so tired, you're like, I need a nap afterwards. And now like one hour driving, it's it's completely fine and you don't even feel it anymore. So exactly. it must be the same with the aircraft as <laughs> exactly. well, Exactly. Right? But afterward, as they, as they get into their business, uh, they get even longer sectors, one hour, two hours, and at the end it's a four hour session with two hours briefing and one hour debriefing. So it's, it's a quite long day. So during the, during the flying training, uh, they have the security and safety checks and then the uh, pre-flight duties, um, like the aircraft walk around. Then they start the engines, take off, and after the landing, when they complete the session, they're securing the aircraft as well and they have some uh, post-flight duties. At the end of the day, uh, they have a debriefing where uh, the instructor evaluates the session, perform uh, the training, um, fill out the uh, training record, and also make some conclusions, uh, debrief the items uh, where, they, uh, where the instructor uh, felt that there are some discrepancies or, or weakness of, of the students appeared. Uh, so complete the documentation and that's all. And what are the exercises that students do? Sorry, to what are the exercises that students do? Uh, students do uh, normal exercises, and also because we train pilots, they have to know the abnormal or the emergency exercises. The normal ones are the basic uh, and advanced maneuvers. Basic maneuvers like just turning a fly, uh, turning the aircraft in in, in, a, in a direction, or just uh, changing an altitude, and so and so on. Advanced maneuvers are more complicated. Let's say they perform uh, for the very first time by their own. Uh, normal traffic circuit around the airport. It takes around five minutes, one uh, takeoff, one landing or one touch and go. So these are uh, the advanced maneuvers. And also they have the abnormal and emergency procedures. They are, these are much more uh, complicated. 
So the abnormal ones, I would say that the difference between the abnormal and the emergency, the abnormal is a, a, a smaller failure or just a single failure as we as we use it. Uh, the emergency is when you have a multiple failure on board or a very severe failure like um, an engine failure or a dual engine failure. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really important for the students to be on on top of their game, I guess, to become uh, pilots who can tackle all these situations. So um, how do their professors uh, evaluate these students to make sure that they have the utmost knowledge that they need to to do this job properly. Yes, uh, in this training, it is really important to highlight that monitoring the individual performances based on the competences as well uh, is 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 one of the one of the key element because they need to have a very uh, very detailed and very uh, specific feedback on on their performance. Uh, actually, we use a normal scale, so it's one to five. Uh, one is the unsatisfactory, the unsafe level, and from two, it's it's acceptable, so uh, it's fine. The five is the exemplary. However, um, uh, based on the regulation, also three means a good standard. So it's it's not like three, like in the secondary school, that three is not not the best. For example, in in Hungary, uh, in the aviation industry, the three is a standard, so it's completely safe, and he or she is on a target. We can mm-hmm. say. Um, also, we have uh, some guidelines and tables what we have to use um, uh, during the the evaluation or during the grading um, because we want to want to make a quite objective method. Uh, because, for example, one student on the next day or on the, on the third day maybe get another instructor, so we really need to have an objective information about the student performance. Um, it is also important to mention that, especially nowadays, as the aviation industry um, develops, um, we grade the technical skills, like the execution of a takeoff or, or a landing or, or just commencing a turn. But in the few in the in the past decades, the non-technical skills, uh, such as problem solving, decision making, the standard communication in the cockpit, or uh, or the leadership and the teamwork, is much more important uh, regarding the, the 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 training grading. Why do you think these non-technical skills are so important and highlighted nowadays? Actually, uh, the reason behind that. Uh, during the improvement of, of training in, in aviation, they realized that we do not have to focus on the task. We do not have to focus on how to execute uh, a given exercise, for example. It is important, but it is more important to have to evaluate the competency, how they behave in the cockpit, for example, or what can they do? Because, uh, for example, the technical knowledge or the theoretical knowledge is is really important. However, if you recognize that somebody has some lack of knowledge, it's even more important because then you know that what you have to prepare for. So, for example, just uh, put it into uh, in a context. Um, Let's say we have a pilot incapacitation. The pilot incapacitation when some of the crew member on board hopefully we have two uh, in, a, in a commercial aircraft, uh, one of them got incapacitated, got unconscious. Uh, in that case, if you just have a very nice technical knowledge, but you don't have any other non-technical skill, you will perform it, the job that my colleague got unconscious. What to do? I complete the task because I have sufficient theoretical knowledge to land the aircraft by myself. Mm-hmm. Of course, it is it is it is okay, but it would be much more nicer if you could discover that your colleague is 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 in a bad condition in advance. So not just focus on your task, but focus on your environment. This is this is really important in aviation. This is why um, the competency-based training focus on the non-technical skills, as mentioned before. So, what is the role of a pilot today? What is the role of a pilot? Um, the role of a pilot is uh, totally changed. Uh, in the 20th century, it was, in two words, fly the aircraft. However, in the 21st century, is to manage the flight. 
is totally different. So the pilot duties and responsibilities are uh, primarily performing the pre and post flight aircraft inspection, selecting safe and efficient flight routes, depending on the type of operation. Uh, so regardless, this, this small aircraft flying a private flight or just a, a commercial airline, uh, airliner um, flying a standard uh, a Paris London flight or whatever. Um, the other one is determining the risk uh, that may occur. This is really important. So the risk assessment for every every day uh, of the pilot is, is really important. Keeping accurate records and compliance uh, for compliance purposes, it's also so you have to be really precise, for example, when you're filling out just a simple document. You cannot allow yourself to d disregard one point. So if if uh, on a sheet you have a uh, date and time, you have to write down correctly the date and time. It's not enough to write mm. down the date or just the time. It's small things, but it, it counts so much. So communicating with uh, the required agencies, personnel, crew and stuff is also really important and ensuring the safety and comfort of the passengers, crew, cargo, and also the aircraft is, is one of the uh, key points. So it became a way, way more than just flying the flight. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because sometimes they say that uh, also a monkey can learn how to fly an aircraft, which is true. But the monkey cannot cannot think behind behind the stage and behind the management. Mm. So today's aircrafts are much more reliable. They are much more computerized. Uh, those ones in the um, 20th, 20th century. At that time, five crew members were. At that time, five crew members were on board. Um, that means that uh, we had a captain, a first officer, the navigator, flight engineer, the radio operator. All of them, they had to work together. Okay. However, nowadays, we only have three crew members. It sounds interesting, just the captain and a first officer. Why could it happen? Because all the automation, uh, the systems on board of an aircraft can replace the other crew, st the crew members on board. However, these three crew members have to check each other and also the automation and the aircraft. So it's a huge challenge, even though sometimes uh, passengers think that, oh my God, they are just sitting in front of the plane and, and it's nothing to do, just, just taking the controls, performing the takeoff and the landing, but not. So they have to work together with the aircraft. And it's a lot more responsibility, I guess. Exactly. So like five people's, responsibilities go to two people like it's 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 very stressful i guess so it they is. have to be prepared for that to deal with that it is it's so uh considering all this uh what do you think makes a good pilot it's a quite complex topic as well just like the training but uh, most important uh, things are uh, the clear communication this is this is essential in the cockpit it's vital uh, we do not use um uh, so we are not a native speakers, but we need to find the, the way how to communicate in the cockpit. We use a standard language. It, it is important to, uh, to use a radio phraseology because radio communication uh, in aviation is really important. So um, on, on board of an aircraft, uh, we need to find a common way where every nation understand each other in the radio. And we have a quite clear imagine what's going in the back so mm. uh, it is really important like that weird alphabet thing i guess yeah exactly. where you, where you so, have a word for yes, every letter alpha, 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 <laughs> and so and so on exactly situation awareness is uh, really important uh, in order to to create a mental picture the mental picture uh, i mean that if you are just on the ground but you imagine that what would you do in case of an emergency situation, in case of a, in case of a, a, an engine failure, for example, then uh, if you imagine this and you create the mental picture, you will be much more prepared for the actual scene. And what you know on the ground, hundred percent, I'm quite sure that when you're up in the air, you will have just thirty percent of the of, of the knowledge comes back. So this is important to so to recall these items. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, team working skills are really important because even though now, as we mentioned, just two crew members are in the uh, cockpit, but 
who else are in the aviation? We have the air traffic controllers. We have the cabin crew uh, on board of an aircraft. We have the company who we have to contact with and so and so on. The ground stuff, for example, the ground handling stuff. So all of them, we need to have a, a very good uh, teamwork uh, skills as well. Good time, good time management is essential. Uh, quick thinking skills as well. Um, the ability to remain calm, of course, in an emergency or just in a standard day. Um, I, I think it's... it's Speaks it's for itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the mentality is important. Um, of course, the, um, the mathematics and the creative skills combine the combination, uh, 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 combination of both of them is really important. And knowing when to break the rules, this is one of the most important thing uh, nowadays because uh, plenty of regulation rules are worked out. Uh, SOPs, the SOPs are the standard operating procedures are worked out. But sometimes uh, the actual situation overrides all this uh, mm. all this all these uh, rules so definitely you need to know when to break that that rule can we just go back a little bit to uh, pharma flight uh, company and this cooperation with the university what are the advantages of uh, being trained uh, as a professional pilot uh, at pharma flight and at UD um, we are continuously revising our um, procedures as well and uh, uh, our our standard the company standards also we are modernizing our fleet so we have quite new aircraft uh, one year old two years old aircraft and uh, we are about to deliver uh, two new simulators uh, both with co uh, conventional instruments and, and, and a glass cockpit it is also a good atmosphere because uh, our uh, Students are from 33 countries, so it's a totally multicultural mm -hmm. uh, environment, and um, uh, we can see that uh, it's it's also a challenge for us. But for them, it's a very nice basic uh, to adopt how to work with uh, different nations, like uh, in the aviation industry, it works. So. Um, uh, this is a nice opportunity and also in, in Hungary, we can say that uh, the weather conditions are also quite uh, uh, good to train a pilot because uh, they can experience how to fly in a quite hot uh, and hazy weather and afterward they can get a, a rainy day or just a quite a, a freezing day mm -hmm. during winter time. In, in fog we don't, we don't in a real flight. However, in the simulator they have uh, several practice because they uh, they they study how to operate an aircraft in a bad weather condition in a, a low visibility operation. So at that time they have to trust in their instrument without any visual reference. Uh, that must be tough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever um, rethink the training structure that you have at Pharma Flight? Um, do you deal with um, new incoming knowledge or do you try to um, kind of develop your, your training program? Uh, yes, um, I, I have to say that we, we had changed in some part of uh, the training um, as new implementing rules and also um, recommendation uh, just released by uh, the legal side. So, we had to implement, for example, the UPRT training. The UPRT means the upset prevention and recovery training. It's now also uh, part of the integrated ATP course. It's due to some fatal accident happened in the past few years. Um, it's about, uh, in a short way, that pilot couldn't recognize the aircraft uh, situation and state, even though it was just a basic um, stuff to, to realize in which condition uh, the aircraft is or was, but they couldn't do that. So they trust only in the instruments. They just focus inside the aircraft. Uh, they, should, they should think out of the loop. Uh, I would say in this case. The accident uh, you might have heard about was the Air France 447 uh, from Rio de Janeiro to uh, Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport. And this was the, the scenario when they really uh, thought deeply to restructurize the training and name that what was the problem uh, on that given flight. Also another training elements implemented, this is called KSA, 
KSA 100. Uh, it means it's Knowledge, Skills and Attitude, so it's also an acronym. Uh, this is due to the uh, airline's feedback because uh, they uh, noticed that during the recruitment process, pilots have some kind of lack of knowledge and they don't have enough assessment during their training where they can uh, step forward to, uh, to another stage of um, of flight. So uh, we implemented a formative and summative assessment, including mental math tests. And also a new element, uh, which is about to under, which is under implementation, is the uh, APS MCC. Uh, this means the airline procedure standards for multi-crew cooperation training. Not just simply the multi-crew cooperation, where the two crew members working together, but it's also putting this into an, an airline environment where you have much more time pressure, where you have not just the system-related uh, issues, what you have to solve, but you also uh, have to solve um, um, cabin problem like uh, like uh, uh, passenger incapacitation or, or, or so and so on. So uh, these are quite quite interesting how we have to adopt uh, all this regulation modification into our systems. And also, of course, we have some experiences. So during the training where we see that uh, in which, uh, which direction should we move. So uh, we also try to implement based on the experience, based on the training, what we, what we uh, perform here in Debrecen at Pharma Flight. If somebody's interested in this course and is thinking about joining the professional pilot program of the University of Debrecen uh, together with PharmaFlight, um, what would you say are the most difficult things about the course that they would need to know beforehand? Yeah, so actually the uh, applicants have to have a sufficient theoretical knowledge, skills to operate an aircraft, thus complete the practical training as well, and valid custom medical certif certificate during the entire course, during the entire training. And um, if one of the three items is missing, uh, the students will fail to uh, comply uh, with the, the training requirements. And also, uh, we are not 100% sure that uh, he or she will finish the training right on time as, as the schedule and, and as it is in the uh, syllabus. And also, uh, students have to present it during the practical training out of the university time. This is also important to mention because it's not just uh, how to say for, for a job. We used to say that it's nine to five. It's not a nine to five job. It's not just not just the study, not just the job is not nine to five, but also the study is not nine mm -hmm. to five. So sometimes they have to be presented during the early morning flights or simulator training, and it can last during uh, uh, it can last uh, until midnight or even even later. So. Uh, due to uh, use of simulator and also due to uh, the training effectiveness, uh, practicing, for example, the night visual uh, flight. So, it, of course, it's scheduled for, for, for night time. Um, they have to be fleet to fly. It's also really important. Uh, as I mentioned, we have this I am safe model, but uh, fit to fly is, is really important. So it's not allowed um, to be sleepy or just uh, uh, having, um, I, I don't really care uh, me mentality at that time. So we have to uh, evaluate them before the training that, okay, are you ready for the flight? Are you fit to fly? If yes, then we can continue our training and we start with the briefing. A student fa uh, uh, may fail uh, during um, uh, progress checks because we have plenty of them uh, implemented into the training uh, syllabus. So students may fail on their first solo progress check or IR or multi-engine progress check. Um, this is also really important. And at, right at the end of the course, we have the skill test. This is an authority exam. So it may happen that they they pass all the smaller progress checks, but unfortunately they cannot pass the final skill test. In that case, we also, uh, we had no chance not to terminate the, 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 the training. So this is really demanding. So if somebody is focusing, of course, we design the training in order to uh, have a clear way. So if we see that a student cannot perform uh, the, the according to the um, published uh, schedule, uh, we stop that training, but it may happen, so we cannot enclose it 100%. So it's up to the students.
I'd rather say. So it's very demanding, and you have to be very clear about uh, whether you're ready to be a pilot and start this program because th it seems like there's no slacking, there's no uh, bad days, there's no. You, you have to be on top of your game basically yeah. for the rest of your life <laughs> or until you retire. So. Definitely not. And the pilot job means uh, lifelong learning, I would say. Uh, but it works when. When the aircraft gets on board and and you are at the controls and you see the sunset, the sunlight, and so on and so on, so it's um, worth it. do you think you could do that? Like, if if you were eighteen again, <laughs> would you want to start this program? Well, I don't know. It's uh, it seems fun. Uh, well, it seems challenging, but I like challenges. So why not? Yeah, <laughs> and it must be so exciting to to be like traveling all the time, but it's just so much responsibility that you really have yeah, to think hard about it, right? Well, it's the responsibility and as you said, uh, you really need to um, have multiple skills, technical, non-technical, whatever, but I mean, it's I assume that it's worse. Yeah, well, we I, really I want think to it's sorry. I think it's just feasible if you really set your mind yeah, 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 and uh, we are really on to increase the number of women pilots in the industry. So, mm. so maybe don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah, so as soon as I turn eighteen again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but jokes aside, guys, if you would like to apply, if you're interested in this program, then you can visit our website, edu.unidab.hu. Uh, you can go to our uh, undergraduate or bachelor programs. And uh, within the engineering programs, you will find the professional pilot program. So thank you for coming today. Thank um, you very much for the invitation. It was very interesting. Uh, honestly, I didn't understand half of it, uh, <laughs> but it seemed like such a good thing to to be doing and um to all the young people who um who want a, a good career where you can travel where you can learn a lot um i i guess this is something to try out so don't hesitate yeah thank you very much thank you very much for the interview. thank you and see you next time <laughs> bye. bye 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 bye